Rebecca, and we're going to be making sourdough bread. But first, what you need to know is, what is sourdough bread? Well, sourdough bread is natural yeast. This is just regular yeast from the store. Another word from, for natural yeast is sourdough starter. And how, how do you make natural yeast? Well, natural yeast is a mixture of flour and water. Now come look at our sourdough starter. Those bubbles, right? You know why that is? Well, the sourdough starter is alive. And you know why that is? Well, it has some natural bacteria. And it's because it mixes with the air and the flour and the water. And so it has natural bacteria. So that causes it to be alive. In order for it to stay alive, we need to feed it. So I'm going to feed it right now before we start baking. We need to feed it a cup of flour and a cup of water. And I have a half cup here. So two half cups equals one cup. So I'm going to scoop it two times and fill it up two times. Let's get on to it. Okay. And then feed it. And then feed it again. And now for the water. Feed it. And feed it again. Come look at it now. Now we have to mix it. Whoa, right? Ooh, I see some more bubbles. And they're getting bigger. And now we have to wait for it like about three hours. Close the lid. If you have a jar. The jar would be very helpful. And um, wait for three hours. And then we can get back to it. So it's been about three hours. And uh, I think the sourdough starter is ready. Do you know how I know? Oh. Look at all those bubbles. More than last time, huh? Well, we're going to use that later. Because right now I need about 700 grams of water. Five. That's about good. We need 300 grams of sourdough starter. So now we're going to push tail back to zero. And now add some of the sourdough starter. Do you know how I know it's ready? Look, it floats. Okay, now we're about 303 grams of sourdough starter. And do you know how I know it's ready? It floats. It's now airy. And for the next step, we're going to use our hands to mix it. Okay, let's go mix it. <laughs> Look, it's all mixed. It's kind of milky. See, you need to mix it until it's a liquid. And I set the scale to zero. Now, you'll, and do you know why that is? You'll need 100 grams of whole wheat flour and 900 grams of bread flour. Let's do this. I think one more scoop to finish this off for the 900 grams of the bread wheat flour. And now it looks like Mount Everest. 
<laughs> now we're gonna mix it with our hands again. Now we're gonna bring this gently into the sink so the flour doesn't go everywhere. Gently. Okay. Now we're gonna mix it with our hands. And I need to give you a tip. And if it gets all messy after, uh, don't wash your hands with soap or else your bread's gonna taste like soap. So, a fact. So, see we mix the dough and now it's kind of, sh it's a shaggy dough. And we'll let it wait for a minute because we, we're gonna add salt later. We, the reason why we wait is we don't want the salt to kill the dough. And we'll wait and then it'll, the dough will come together and it'll be called something called auto lease. Now, let's uh, cover, make sure to cover it with a towel and let's leave it, the dough, for 20 or 30 minutes. Nighty night. Have you been US? Now we're gonna put 20 grams of salt and 50 grams of water. Mm. 20, perfect. Now let's push two again, back to zero. And pour more water. Now what we have to do is mix it. Okay. Ooh. So, now I mixed it and see it's not shaggy anymore. It's one dough. And every 30 minutes we have to come back and fold it. So, and so we can have, we pick it up, fold it, so it has more air in it, so it's nice. So, there's a famous bakery in San Francisco called the Tartine Bread. And the, this, what I did, what I'm to, telling you about folding it, it's called the No Need Bread. And it's because you don't need to knead it. Now we're gonna cover it with the towel and we're gonna, every 30 minutes for about three hours, we're gonna fold it, like I taught you. Remember what I told you. We have to do it like five or six times in, for three hours. Like for every 30 minutes. So we, yeah, you have to get your hands wet and then... Flip, flap it over here. Next side. Flap it over. Next side. Flap it over. Next side, flap it over. Okay, and then you pick it up from the side, reach underneath, remember, on the side, not from the top. And then, ah. Oh, ho, 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 look how big it got. And then flap it over. And then do that fold again. The other side, fold again. The other side, do it like two or three times every 30 minutes. Again, again. Then remember, from the sides, pick it up and then flap it over. It's very sticky now. It's not liquid anymore. <laughs> Look at all those bubbles. Do you know where the bubbles are? Well, there's a big little hills right there. Now, let's get on to cutting and shaping. So, right now we're gonna wet our hands. Don't dry them, remember that. And uh, get it a little away from the bowl, eat on each side. Now, let's uh, get it out of the bowl. Mm. Like that on all the edges so it doesn't stick and use a dough cutter not cut the dough remember that dough is precious and put it on your cutting board if you have one 
Okay, I got the dough out of the bowl. Put that in the sink. Don't put this in the sink. Um, and we're gonna use this to scrape it. And then we're gonna use our hands right here, always ready, and then scrape this. And then on each side, scrape it up. And then fold it up again. Fold it up. Don't fail on me, dog. And then flip it over again. And over again on the other side. All the way up. All the way up. And then reach with this underneath here. Try not to cut the bread. And then oh, flip it over. Whew. And then, this is the exciting part. You gotta use flour, pat it over, rub it, and if it was like one of your pastries. Now, this is an important part. I need to tell you a fact from all this. After you use the, when you wash your hands and keep it wet, just dry them because you need to dry them because your sourdough will be wet. And guess what? A fact, this dough makes two loaves of sourdough. Can you believe that? Because we're gonna cut right now. So be very careful and cut. Then use your hand to spread it apart. Come look at the inside. All that wet dough, and this one's soft. Okay. Be very careful when you cut it because you want to keep the air in there. You don't want to push down on it or also squeeze it all out. So go like that. Spread it apart. So, now that we cut it, now we're going to shape it. And let's scooch one piece aside and use the other. So just like we did with the big loaf of dough, we're gonna do it to this piece. Remember this? We go like that, but there was an important part. Only do this side, then a half of the bread. Then you use this piece and then go the whole bread. Uh, like that, flap it all the way over. And then we're going to fold in the sides. And then, do you see these seams? We're going to pinch it in. And now we're going to flip. Look at it, all the seams that I make. Now we're going to flip it over with this flat side and now we're gonna turn it. Do you know why? It helps create surface tension and that helps seal the seams. Okay, now that's it's already filled in the seals. Now we're gonna lift it up. Oh, now we're gonna get one of these bread proof baskets now we're gonna add a little of white rice flour and from Bob's Red Mill and put a little at the bottom of the bread proof basket. It's because we don't want it to stick when we take it out of the basket. So let's put it in. And we're gonna flop it right over and ta-da! See all that surface tension we did? The reason why we put it upside down with the surface tension is because we're going to flip it out of the basket after we're done with the basket. So now we're going to put this um, bread in the, the, dough, the half dough in the bed, bread proofing basket and to this giant 
zip off bag. And then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator. And then why that is? It is because um, it helps when we leave it overnight. Yes, we're gonna leave it overnight. Well, it helps create a sour taste. And that's why it's called sourdough. And you have to leave a little crack here and then you get all the air out. Air, you're not welcome here. Then you close it up and put it in the refrigerator. And then for the little holes, you have to hold pinch. Hold, and hold right here on the holes of the edge, pinch. Okay, I think we got it all. You may try to make sure to keep all the air in. That's why we did the hold pinch to steal it all. Ah. Okay, now let's pick it up. Flap it in. Mm. We did a great job with sealing all the cracks in. Stay in there, Leo. Don't come out. Well, back the next morning. The first thing you have to do, go to your oven and come over here. Preheat your oven to 500 degrees. Okay. And let's open the oven. And make sure to put your baking pot in the oven when you preheat it. So it makes your pot hot. And then, do you see that metal bowl over there? We, you have to put water in there. Do you know why? So it makes steam. Okay, now you have to go back to the refrigerator where you left your dough. And... Get my dough and take it out of the Ziploc bag. Is that when I what I am seeing? That is. Look at that huge bubble. Okay, put the Ziploc bag aside and let's just take a look at it. We're gonna leave this. On, uh, we're gonna wait here and for one hour before we bake it. Leave it here for one hour. Now it's time to bake and let's put the pot out of the oven. And if it's too hot, ask for a parent or guardian to help you. Now you're gonna grab the edges, hold it tight, and hold it over. Now we're gonna do something called scoring the dough. And that means putting cuts on the top of the bread so the steam can come in and so the bread can rise. And guess how we're gonna do that? We're gonna use a razor called the lame. And the razor part of the lame is very sharp. So you'll need a parent or guardian to help you. So my mom's gonna do this part. tip to get like those ears in the to get the star shape you have to like cut underneath the bread and pull up now it's time to put it in the pot and put it in the oven okay 
Nighty nights. Sweet dreams. Now I'm gonna open the door and put the pot in. <clears throat> this is how it works. Now I close the oven door. Okay, now we're gonna bake it for 20 minutes at 500 degrees. Then, after that 20 minutes, we're gonna lower it down to 450 degrees, and then we're gonna take the take it out of the oven, put it right here, take the lid off, and then put it straight back in for another 20 minutes with the lid off. Now it's time to turn it down to 450 and take the lid off. Take the lid off right now. Oh, oh. It's not ready yet. Put it back in. Close the door. And turn it back to 450. Turn it back to 450. Now we're gonna bake it for 20 more minutes. Now it's time to turn off the oven. It's off. And we're not gonna take it out, but we're gonna leave it ajar so it makes it a little more crispy on the outside. For five more minutes. Now it's time to take it out. Have a parent or guardian to help you because um, it's really hot and you might get it burned. Oh, 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 look at that. Mm. Put it on a cooling rack and look at these peaks. Do you know why they're bigger? When we scored it, the steam came in and helped it rise. And now we have to wait for at least 30 minutes before we cut it. Here's another tip. If if you knock on it and it's hollow, that means it's a good one. It's hollow, it's a good one. Another tip, when it comes straight, when the bread comes straight out of the oven and you put your ear to it, you can still hear it crackle. It's time to cut the bread. Make sure you have a parent or a guardian to help you. It's time to cut the bread. What's in the inside? Okay. I'm so excited to see. And look, the steam. It's you might not see it. Oh, the steam is still there from when we take took it out of the oven. That means it's very hot. So be very careful. Oh! <gasps> Whoa! Look at all those gas bubbles. There's a huge one right there for watching hope you like my recipe and try out cooking this bread you'll love it on the outside and the inside bye